Welcome to the Bet on Me podcast, the ultimate resource for softball players looking to take control of their training and reach their full potential. I'm your host, Krista Stoker, and on this show, we'll be discussing everything from taking a holistic approach to your training to data-driven strategies for maximizing and growing yourself, not only on the field, but off. At S2 Breakthrough, we believe that athletes should lead their own journey and push past any perceived ceilings on their talent. So join us as we explore the world of softball player development and help you bet on yourself. Because when you bet on yourself, you can't lose. All right, back for another episode, and I am uh, super excited uh, to talk with Jamie today about specifically PAC, uh, which we'll get into, and and sort of a new initiative and the new program uh, she's starting through the Alliance, which is really exciting. Um, but maybe, Jamie, first just uh, tell everyone sort of a little bit of your background, how you ended up where you are today, and then we can go from there. Well, thanks for thanks for having me first. I guess um, I'll try to make it short and, and kind of get to the point too of how it leads into Alliance and into PAC, but I'm Jamie Lowprice. I'm uh, born and raised in a small town in Texas, um, which I think is a lot of my foundation and, and roots. I came from, I played every sport imaginable, um, except softball, <laughs> which is kind of funny until like the very end, um, but finally got into to, I was actually a really um, competitive soccer player, which introduced me to the college world. Got into softball, played at Texas A&M. Um, after that, I was I was pretty fortunate to play in the National Pro Fast Pitch League. And I think that, one, expanded my network big time, um, but also opened my eyes to perhaps a lot of the, the problems and issues. And I'm a problem solver. So it's like, all right, what can I do? Um, went back to school, got my PhD thought I was going to academia, didn't stay in that very long. Um, spent five years after I taught at University of Tampa, I spent five years at USSA and eventually was running their uh, their national fast pitch program and and working at the youth level. And that's where I got to meet so many of the, the club directors and, and youth coaches. Um, and I think the people that are just really, really passionate about softball and about the athletes. And that led us honestly um, to the creation and, and formation of the Alliance fast pitch. So here I am today. Yeah. So like make it really quick. (laughs) Yes. That was pretty good. Um, maybe just like a couple highlights of not the whole, it doesn't have to be the whole story. Um, but a little bit of like, what are some of the specific foundations of the Alliance or what are some things that you guys maybe identified that you really wanted to try to, um, solve or work towards solving in the youth game, particularly. I think the real story of, of how the Alliance started was um, in the summer of 2019. And there were four individuals who got together um, during the Colorado tournament. And it was Mike Stith, Tony Rico, Scott Smith, and Greg Schnudy. And those four run pretty large programs. Um, and they were getting a lot of preferential treatment that we see at, at, the, at the top teams. But a lot of teams inside their own organizations weren't. And they started recognizing um, just some of the different inequities. So Mike Stith and I had, had built a, a pretty good relationship and friendship. He called me and you know went on this this mission of how can we better serve our, our youth players. And I think the biggest thing we noticed too is everybody operates in silos and it, it's a very fragmented youth softball world. So it's like, what if we just all started working together? And, and that was, those were honestly the the first conversations. Number one was, putting the athlete first. I think that's our biggest pillar, which we'll probably talk a, a lot about. Um, and the other is collaboration. And I, I think um, we're hoping to be an example inside the the larger world of softball that, hey, if you actually work together off the field, we, we can make really, really special things happen for the athletes. And and we can combine our resources and, and actually make, you know, more accessible, more affordable, um, and just help each other and, and help the families. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so I, you know, have the the privilege of being a little involved with the formation um, of PAC, and so maybe uh, just very briefly, what is it? Um, and then we could get into sort of like how it was formed and the reasonings. But uh, let's start with that. Okay, it is not the the PAC, right? Like the PAC twelve. I don't know. Like <laughs> yeah. you think of the the brew and bubble and all the the PAC, but uh, PAC is our version. Uh, player advisory committee and it's something that uh, when I was a, an athlete at Texas A&M I was involved with the student athlete advisory committee 
And I thought it was really powerful to, to have a voice as an athlete. And, and I used to talk with our athletic director and our administration and, you know, we're a company as the Alliance and in our mission statement, it, it says, you know, we're about the athlete and putting the athlete first. Well, if we look in the mirror, we, we better give her a voice and, and she better have a seat at the table. And so it, it's kind of been um, something that we've been working on in the background and got together yourself and, and several um, former players who are now, you know, back in the youth game and throughout this concept of what if we started our own advisory committee of athletes um, and we work with juniors and seniors. And so that led to the Alliance Fast Pitch Player Advisory Committee, the PAC. Yeah, I think um, uh, I know this was sort of forming in your head and then you and I were talking about a little bit, but I often think even in our business at S2, we'll get asked a lot, you're thinking of marketing or the way you approach things. And, you know, at the end of the day, our it's a weird space when your client is a lot of times the adult, um, but who you're serving is uh, the athlete and children, uh, teenagers. Yeah. And so I think that there's um, important ways that we can start to give them seats at the table. Um, and I think this is a really good start to that. It's been uh, fun to be a part of. So maybe walk through, so this is the first year, sort of vision for this year of the group. Uh, how did people, sort of get picked for it, apply for it? What did that process look like? I think it, it starts back uh, in December. And and I, I think it might've been your idea, Krista, of like, why don't we bring on, we're trying to make decisions, like you said, for athletes. So why don't we bring a couple on and just get their feedback? So we had our first kind of focused group with um, with some high school athletes in December. And I I was fired up because it seemed like they were they were excited, they're passionate about it, which it, it validated that that idea. And so then we opened up applications in February and, and then that's when I realized like, okay, we're all, it's for juniors and seniors, seniors are going to be done pretty quickly. Um, but we opened up the applications. We also had a, where coaches could nominate their players and didn't know how it was going to go. And I'm sitting here watching like all the applications come in and there were none in the first week. I'm like, shoot, maybe like timing is wrong. And so then I'm like, all right, let's extend it. They're all busy. Right. And, um, and we're fortunate with the Alliance that we have access to a lot of the coaches and pushing it through them. And by the end of it, we had 19 applications um, from, from uh, juniors and seniors. And I just thought that was incredible. Like I, I was more fired up about that. And I also realized how difficult I made the application process. Like, dang, these yeah. questions are kind of brutal yeah. uh, or they're long. Right. And you could tell that, that these girls took a lot of time on them. And I started reading the responses and it was like, I have chills thinking about the responses from those 19 athletes. I'll never forget it. And talk about validating that not only is it the right thing to do to, to give them a voice, but man, their voice is powerful. So I was already excited just of going through the applications. And um, I, I think the mix was 10 juniors, nine seniors uh, in high school that, that applied. And at that point, it's like, you know what? you did this and you want to be a part of the foundation. So we, we want all of them to be a part of it. So kind of a, the backstory of, of how it all launched there. Yeah, I think it's, um, so on this week, Ashley and I went to a, a business conference and Andy Dunn, um, who is the founder of Bonobos Pants, uh, it's a long story, but he was the panelist <laughs> and he just wrote a book and it's actually about his mental health journey. It really has nothing, uh, nothing in some ways to do with business, but a question that the, uh, one of the audience members asked him was, how do you help educate Gen Z about mental health? And he started laughing and he said, they don't need educated on it. This, this group of this generation is like more aware, more educated about so many things than any of us have ever been. They need resources. They need the ability to have a platform. And I think um, as we've been going through this process and I've seen the application and I think we can get into sort of a little bit of the first meeting, that's been so clear to me, which is this generation doesn't need help seeing things clearly. They see it very clearly. They understand exactly what their um, issues, worries, fears are. Uh, they just need a platform to for us to listen to them and then for us to do something about it, um, which I think has been very clear in the answers that they gave to you in the application and, and sort of in that first meeting. So maybe without getting into 
um, every detail of what came up. We had our first meeting. Um, sort of the purpose was to, you know, listen to what they wanted the structure of this group to look like. Um, maybe just touch on a few of the highlights for you um, out of that first meeting. Yeah. So the the first meeting, I think we had um, obviously schedules are, are tough. I think we had. 13 14 of the of the athletes that that joined us and um you know it starts off it's zoom right it's a zoom meeting i think the first thing i was most impressed with is they all turn their cameras on and i'm laughing because i meet weekly with a lot of their coaches and their cameras aren't on i'm like you could teach your own coaches about and they were on time and like a couple of them who were going to be late they emailed me and said hey i'm coming from practice i'm coming from lessons i'm like okay little things like that i think are already awesome um but it was you know, once we got into the conversation, I was just trying to facilitate and I think the, the first question that really got them going is what are some of the biggest challenges and difficulties that youth softball players are facing? And it was cool to watch them feed off each other. And I, I will say too, at the intros at the beginning was really fun to listen to. You had, you know, we have athletes from Texas, Iowa, California, New York, Wisconsin, uh, I think there was a Georgia. We definitely had some accents in there too, but I think they enjoy, like they play against each other quite a bit in the summer or they get to follow each other through the Alliance. And so I think that was cool for them to to also get to know each other a little bit on on that level. Um, but man, when they started talking and just, they, they know, like you said, they know what the issues are in, um, there was a lot about identity there was a lot like of just not being a softball player. You know, we, especially at this level, a lot of them, they're working out, they're taking lessons, they're training, they're practicing, they're on the summer, they're playing all the time. Um, I thought that was pretty cool with some of them of already recognizing like I'm more than just a softball player, but how do we talk about that? How do we help other athletes? Obviously the recruiting was a, was a big topic of just, and not necessarily like, how do I get recruited? It was more of like, the anxiety, the mental, like the, the tough things that are going on as a teenager, uh, while you're also trying to figure out what, you know, what you're going to do going to college. Um, I think that one of the coolest things was a, one of the girls and you could just, again, these girls, you can tell they're going to be very successful off the field, you know, later on after their softball careers. Um, but one of them was like, Hey, I, I have an idea, you know, can we, can we do an actual in-person meeting at the AFCS? And I'm like, well, yes, we, we definitely can. I love that idea. And it, that's what, you know, not only did they show up, did they communicate really well, but they also had proactive ideas that they're ready to implement too. And that's what, that's what I was excited about. The girl who, um, who, who spoke up and had the idea, I, I text her coach. I'm like, just curious where, where is she going to college? She's going to Harvard. Like, uh, uh, of course she is. I can, I can tell. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it was powerful. Um, I think the way you led the meeting was obviously to let them talk and, and sort of sort through their own thoughts together. And, and, um, recruiting was definitely something they brought up a lot. And I, I, it just happens. It's not everyone. Cause there's the Harvard athlete. There's an athlete from my team who's uncommitted right now. So it's not mm -hmm. that everyone has the exact same path, but there were a lot of athletes on the call who are going to big names who were recruited at the September 1st deadline. Like they had this very end. So at first, as they were talking about recruiting, it was very much centered around that path. And I wrote in my notebook, you know, thinking about expanding the recruiting talk. Um, and, and without, either of us saying that yep. as they went around, it went back to an athlete and she said, it seems like we're talking a lot about a very particular like recruiting journey. We should also make sure that we're talking to people that want to go division two and division three, because people should go wherever it works. And it was just amazing. I think to watch mm -hmm. them, uh, sort through and be so self-aware to sort of, you know, give their own feedback of what struggles have been for them, but also self-aware enough to realize their journey is specific to them and they should open um, their thought process through that. Something I think adults uh, struggle to do often. Yeah. So I think it was pretty incredible to, to watch them just like work through those things. So from my standpoint, yeah. just, that was pretty awesome to watch. I had the same thing written down, Krista too. I was going yeah. to make a comment because they were, they were talking about uh, topics because they also came up with the idea that 
they want to lead quarterly or, or maybe bi-monthly um, Zoom calls for athletes. So athletes inside the Alliance would actually join the call and it would be led by these PAC members. And on topic, September 1st, September 1st, September 1st, which is a big recruiting for the Division One level. And that same thing, I, I was about to say it, and then they said it and they took care of it. And actually what I... I'm the girl who uh, who said it, she's going power five, which I thought was awesome that she recognized too, hey, there's a lot of other athletes out there. There's a lot of other rules and, and we need to be inclusive and think about, you know, everybody. So I, I too, I thought that was one of the most uh, powerful things that, that was said on there. And the realization that there's, you know, we have everything from 10 year olds to 18 year olds. And everybody's path is going to look a bit different. Um, so what are the various things that, that they can help with? But I just, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. The, so the monthly or quarterly, I think they came up with zoom calls for the other athletes. I thought was pretty incredible too, that they, obviously they signed up to be a part of a leadership group. So we're talking about, you know, (laughs) some self-selected leaders, but I, I think it's pretty awesome to think about teenagers wanting to, sit on a zoom with people staring at them and, le- and sort of lead and listen. Um, I think that that, uh, was pretty exciting to hear that they wanted to do that. And I think what we know to be true, not only there are some issues with softball and, but there are some issues bigger, uh, and like isolation is such a thing right now. So I think the fact that all of them were like, we want to do an in-person thing. We want to see each other. We want so to connect cool. with each other. It's not surprising, um, as something that just like, there's, you know, need some solution to. So I think that that was pretty awesome for them to identify. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And that's what, I, you know, I don't, um, I don't have kids um, and I, and I don't coach. So I'm not around teenagers very often anymore. Um, I kind of live vicariously through, through our coaches or at our national events. I, and I love it. It's like my favorite thing to be around our athletes in those events so I wasn't quite sure, and I'm getting older now, so I'm getting a little bit more removed from uh, from being a, a high schooler. So I wasn't sure how it was going to be received. Same thing, I, I just had no idea how the applications, how the setting of the Zoom meeting, um, but man, they inspired me. They inspired me even more. And it's, you know, part of me is like, dang, why didn't we do this at the beginning? But I don't think we would have been ready. Uh, so I just, I think the timing is is awesome. And I'm really excited for this group gets to be like our legacy group. And I think they're embracing that too, of like they get to set the foundation for how the player advisory committee is gonna be run for for the rest of this. So it's pretty, that was my thinking too. Like, you know, when I was an athlete, uh, I'm sure like many of us, right? We we grew up in our, as a youth player and we were one of the top kids on the team. And, and I went through some struggles when I went to college because it was the first time like I wasn't a starter all the other freshmen around me were getting all the big awards and it was a very humbling moment. Um, but I was always like academics were always my thing. And, and I think, you know, we, we've recognized a lot of the achievements on the field inside the Alliance, but there's so much more to these athletes, whether it's academics, community service, leadership, and you know, what's, what are the stats out there on women led uh, companies or, or female CEOs, majority of them played organized sports. And so, you know, I'm kind of going on a tangent, but I'm just like so fired up at the leadership level and getting to like showcase these athletes that I could, I have no idea what their stats are. I have no idea where these girls are even going to college. None of that was a, was a part of the process. It's just more of leadership um, and just some of the off the field stuff that they get to showcase and be such good examples for, for the rest of our youth players. Yeah. I think I had shared this with you leading into the formation of the pack, but we had, um, after the JMU player took her life, uh, an ath- a group of our athletes asked to have a session. They were struggling. Um, I think at that point, you know, with COVID and everything, there had been a, a lot of uh, very public um issues, mental health issues, and the athletes were seeing it. Um, and so they asked us to put together, a, um, something at S2. And so we had therapists sit on it. They didn't speak. Um, but just because we felt, um, I think nervous that we wouldn't be appropriately suited to, to answer if yeah. something came up or, or not handle it, 
we had pre-talks with the counselors to make sure that how we were um, having the conversation was appropriate. But really, we just asked open-ended questions of the athletes. What do you need? How are you feeling? Um, and I think that was, it's not that I didn't know it. I mean, S2 is an athlete-led uh, organization, athlete-driven and so we have very close relationships with our athletes. I see them do incredible things every day. But that was one of the first times I was like, we need to listen to them more. <laughs> like, it, they have the answers. And I think, um, you know, a lot of the things they said were kind of similar to this theme, which is it's not that they don't know. They know a lot. It's that they feel like, yeah, but we don't have the resources for these things. Like, we need X, Y, Z. We need these things. Here's what we worry about. Everyone's saying mental health is important, but we're not doing anything about it. Like, how do we do this? So I think it feels like, you know, things like PAC are steps for us to give them what they're asking for, which is some platforms to really, mm -hmm. um, you know, have some outlets and have some help and guidance and be able to, like, ask for what they need. Um, and hopefully through resources, you know, I think you and I both said at different times in the call, uh, I felt like sometimes they were limited with what they were saying because they were like, yeah, but we can't get that. It's like, well, don't assume you can't get things. You're kind of yeah. sitting in a room with people who want to give you the things you're asking for. So I think, um, it, it will feel very powerful if the things like when they say, can we do an in-person meeting at the championship? And you say, yes when those things start to happen, I think you're, you know, you're giving them access to feel powerful. And that's really important because I think they feel a lot of times like their power is being taken away. Yeah. Um, do you, for a lot do of you remember, the, I think the, um, I asked the question of, you know, why, why they want to be a part of it or what first like attracted them to filling out the application. And, and um, I think it was Caden Henry who uh, from Texas, who said, I never actually thought about it that I could have an impact on younger athletes and I could have a voice and influence, you know, beyond just my team. And so that's where just having the platform and, and realizing it. And I do think, um, you know, PAC was really, it wasn't just myself. It was, you know, I did have the idea, but I tossed the idea out to a lot of former players who served in that role, who've they've played college softball, they've been on campus, they've gone through these things. And, and that validated the idea too, like, yes, this is important. This is super important to provide the platform. And that's really our role in this. You're right. Like those, those young women, they had the answers, they have ideas. And, and as they get more and more comfortable, you could see it on the very first call. And I think we're going to see it on every single call after that, um, that as, as they get more comfortable and, and we want them to ask, and okay, what resources, you know, we've, you know, I, I try really, um, I try to think back to my years of playing, but shoot, it's been like 15 plus years now, but it, we do these member webinars and I, I, I mean, I think they're, I think they're good, but are they servicing the needs of the athlete today? And that's what this, this group gets to advise us on. Like, actually we want to hear from this person on this topic because I'm struggling with this. They did bring up social media quite a bit. And that's something like you and I didn't have social media. I can't even imagine what, what they're going through now on top of everything else. And then you look at like at, on the college platform, let's go get people that are really going through it. And like, let's get vulnerable to right and, and talk. It's a safe place. And then you know, we challenge this group of, of the player advisory committee, go back to your teams, go back to your teams, talk to them. And so I just think we're, we're creating, um, facilitating, hopefully this, this ongoing conversation that they can be talking to each other and then come back to this platform. And I asked them too, I'm like, are you guys okay presenting? Like, I would love for them to present to our board of directors. I would love for them to present to, to our commissioners who are made up of organization heads, club coaches. Some of them might even be their own coaches. Uh, and there was no hesitation. They were, yes, they, they wanted to that because their voice and their message is going to be so much more powerful than like coming through a myself or, or somebody else. So I, I'm just, yeah, I think the platform is all they needed. And I think they're going to take this and run with it, which is exactly you know what, what we wanted. Yeah. I think I said to you one time, imagine if every commissioner's meeting, the pack was like in the background and the adults knew it. And I think that there's something, you know, very interesting about that. When we talk about, you know, as I've mentioned, the, the 
the problems with youth softball. It's it's not a specific softball issue. It's uh, layered. <laughs> you know, it's really layered. It's access. It's um, you know, it's all the way to social media and isolation. And there's a lot of layers to it. And so there's no one solution. And I think this idea that, you know, let's start to think about the decisions we're making, uh, the person we're making them for is something that's like, just a really good, just first step, um, into Mm -hmm. sort of making sure we're framing the questions, right. Um, and we're not making assumptions, um, about it. And, and in the same way that, they don't have all the answers and they're not the only stakeholders here either. So I think just starting to bring those groups together is, uh, really incredible. So I'm excited about it. Yeah. Same, same. And it, you're right. Just sometimes, uh, their presence alone inside of meetings will at least make us think a little bit different because we make a lot of decisions on their behalf and, you know, myself included, right. I, I make a lot of decisions on the behalf of the athlete. So hearing from her directly, um, I, I know it's going to change, I, I hope for the, for the better to, you know, make sure that we are delivering on it exactly what we're aspiring to, to deliver on. And I think too, um, you know, we, there's a lot of people that want to get involved too. I've had multiple, um, adults reach out to me about the player advisory committee. And I think there's a lot of mentorship that can come out of this too. You know, I'm excited to bring in speakers to, to showcase women that are doing great things, um, former softball players in, in all different industries, you know, not just softball. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping this becomes just this gigantic network uh, of softball players from, from every generation, which is, that was another one of the core things of, of why we put the Alliance together it is really to, to bring all the different generations together. And, and I think that PAC will just, you know, help us a, a little bit more on that side. Yeah, for sure. All right. I'm going to end it there because I feel like that was a good way to end, but (laughs) thank you for coming on and talking about it. And I'm excited to see uh, where these young athletes lead us. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for having, thanks for uh, supporting the mission of of the player advisory. Sometimes I have crazy ideas and so uh, I appreciate the people that not only so yeah, that's, but also help execute it and, and implement it. So really excited about, about the future and, and what these young athletes lead us to. Well, S2 Nation, thanks for joining another episode of the Bet On Me podcast. Go out today, bet on yourself, and remember, when you bet on yourself, you can't lose.